and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some standard 2020 action with Orzov Sacrifice. So we're calling this Orzov Sacrifice because we have a sacrifice sub theme to our mid range deck. You know, as you can tell here, this is a this is certainly a mid range deck. We have a um, you know we're all over the curve, um, but we have Priest of Forgotten Gods, which can sacrifice two creatures. Um, to trigger. We have Playcrafter, makes both of us sacrifice, and also the opponent sacrifices then too, so more sacrifice there. Cavalier of Night, sacrifice a creature to destroy another one the opponent controls, and then of course Liliana minuses to sacrifice a couple of creatures as well. So, you know, we have a lot of cards that say that, so that's why we're calling it Orzov Sacrifice here. But yeah, this is just uh, kind of a mid-range deck that can really grind out a long game pretty well. With the help of like Midnight Reaper is a really good card advantage engine. Of course, if you're activating Priest, you get to draw cards. Uh, Soren is just incredible in this deck. This is really what the deck's built around, to be honest, is, is Soren. And with that minus ability to keep bringing back creatures. Because, um, you, you know, if you're going to be sacrificing creatures, you need tons of creatures. And that's what Soren can help provide. Cavalier Knight helps your late game as well, getting back Midnight Reaper. Uh, or, you know, any of these other things. And then, of course, all the card advantage Liliana provides with that um, static ability. So, yeah, I like our chances in the late games. I, I am a little worried about the uh, faster aggro decks or, like, decks that go real wide where Priest and Playcrafter aren't very good. Like, if they're going super wide and they have... Um, if, if our opponents have, like, good creatures to sacrifice, that's going to really hurt us. So, hopefully, they're not going too wide. Hopefully, they have... Um, you know, uh, valuable creatures that making them sacrifice those creatures uh, really hinders our opponent. We like seeing uh, control decks with this deck as well. Playcrafter is awesome against control decks, you know, make them sacrifice planeswalkers. And uh, just the card advantage that like Midnight Reaper and Soren provide are real good against control. So, um, yeah, that's kind of our deck in a nutshell here. So let's go ahead and get started and give it a try. All right, so we're going with Ranked Standard 2020. So these are best of one games. That's why you see we don't have a sideboard at all. And we're going to be trying this out here in Mythic. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we don't run into any Black Ley Lines. Nice, he made just um, one. So he just made... Like four or five changes there to the Demir control deck that we played last week, and you're 12 and 0 now with it. That is crazy, Hogs, and that's that is crazy awesome. I mean, like that, very good. We'll just start with this temple. Over starting with the Scour Barons. Usually, like, I would want to start with Scour Barons and try to find, um... Or, sorry, start with Scour Barons and then wait with Temple, because the later on in the game that you hold your Scry Land, the better it is, because uh, the later on, in the like, when you're later in the game, the more important your top decks are. You know, like, what we draw here on turn three isn't really that important. You know, we have a lot of other cards and everything, so the exact card that we draw there isn't as valuable. All right, so Mayhem Devil, that is really gross. Mayhem Devil does trigger whenever either player sacrifices a permanent, so if I activate Priest and sacrifice two permanents, then they get two Mayhem Devil triggers. If I play Playcrafter, they get one Mayhem Devil Trigger. Yeah, that's that's dev like that is maybe the most devastating card we can see. <laughs> that that one really hurts. Uh I guess that's what I get for Is this what I get for like complaining about the like last whenever we played the Selesnia mid range, whenever we played against the 
the Watsi employee that had the three perfect cards in the format back to back to back to be able to win. And I complained about that, and so now this is what they do. We get paired against the anti-sacrifice deck. Yeah, I can't even play Playcrafter with Mayhem Devil out here. I need to, next turn, Cavalier of Night, kill Mayhem Devil. And then we can start playing. But still, it's going to be really rough for us from then as well. Let's draw some spells, please. So if I activate Priest here, we basically trade our two Priests for Footlight Fiend, and we draw a card. Not worth it. Oh, come on. I would love to have that card. This is unfortunate. We basically have a Cavalier of Night and a whole bunch of really bad cards. Just all lands and three cards that are really bad here. We're just continually drawing land. Can, can they draw land? Like they, like you know, they're sitting at four. We're st sitting at three times that almost. More, at least more than double. At least it's a spell that we can play. I would like Basilica Bell Hunt, uh, Liliana. My opponent really should not be doing what they're doing with the no attacks ever. They should really be attacking. Now it's better for us. That Cavalier of Night is good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know why my opponent wasn't attacking. We were dead for a long time if they would have been attacking. Yeah, okay, you would not have attacked those turns. So Dreadhorde... So even just attacking... Like, Dreadhorde Butcher killed... Killed Cavalier of Night. Not to brag, but... I'm totally the best pyromancy student. But if they... So, like, they could have just attacked... So, with all the triggers, like, they were going to kill the Cavalier of Night and and everything. Like, Dreadhorde Butchers, Footlight Fiends. Those should have been attacking. Hey, these little guys are great! But, but definitely the, the Dreadhorde Butcher, for sure. Especially, since, like, before we had the Tithe Taker. Certainly then. Oh, come on, deck. Yeah, and, and they would draw spells with, with Midnight Reaper also, yeah. Bleh. I just sit back here, you know, I just lose two life a turn. have any business being in this game for this long with drawing 10 lands but here we are the midnight reaper just gonna pull them ahead so I think my opponent did not kill tithe taker because they didn't want me to have the flying creature don't worry I brought company We could top deck our Legion's End. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. They have a Bantu. Had no business winning this, and we are actually looking okay. They still have Bantu, but not as bad as it looked a little bit ago.
Man, that was a really, really lucky Legion's End draw for us. I was hoping they were going to sacrifice the Footlight Fiend uh, since we had the Priest here. Okay, so we're going to... that. And we'll get the double attack in. Good. I wanted to see the block. No, block. Block. Do it. Darn it. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a monk. Because if they block, then the Cavalier of Night dies, then we put Playcrafter back in, and then they have to sacrifice their Bantu to the Playcrafter. I got two cards left. <laughs> this is not going to be a fast game, I can tell you that. Yay! Liliana. Will envelop this world. There we go. We brought it back. And we're 1 0. <laughs> that was some top tier grindage. Yeah, that was. That's what this deck can do. We can really grind out late games. But yeah, if, if our opponent was more aggressive, we would not have won that. Yeah, this is a late game deck. Our deck usually looks better whenever um, Priest of Forgotten Gods stays alive, which isn't always the case. Um, probably the most popular removal spell in Standard 2020 is shock, and we are not. And so, like, with that being the case, hmm. so I figured that I, I like just keeping the land drops, being able to hit those, and uh, having the deck help draw me some cards here. I like our opponent's deck, though. It's a black midrange deck. It's very similar. Yeah, so it looks like they're going like mono black midrange. Very similar to the kind of deck that I'm playing over here. Ooh, remember we have Basilica Bell Haunts and 
Seraph of the Scales. I would like to draw either of those cards right now. Or Soren. Yeah, more Cavaliers. Well, we got three Cavaliers in the deck. We got them all here. Yeah, Legion's End did win that game for us. Ugh, Exile? That's rough. Soren. I did not stop this fight, but I will finish it. So they do get to kill the Soren with the mobilized sir. district. If I keep the Soren anyway, so we're gonna sacrifice the Soren. I should maybe I should keep that land in hand. I should keep that land in hand. Because of Urox Fenlurker. really good. It's those Dread Presents. I'd like to draw like a two drop that we could play and then sacrifice to Cavalier and kill this Dread Presence. We're just going to keep on drawing lands. Ooh, I guess so. No. I dwell in the shadows. Let's Ugh. tidy up in there. I need that land. I need to be able to drop. Yeah, it's over. Secrets manifest before you. Well, really cool deck for the opponent. Very similar kind of deck that we're playing here, but we just had a really awkward hand with just having, you know, all the cavaliers and not really too much else. They had a lot a lot better hand than us. But cool deck there. <laughs> you missed Noxious Gear Hulk. Yeah, that's a good one. No, I don't. Coffee, yeah. I don't think so. I'm enjoying the stream life more. And so we, we saw that, that game, how Cavalier of Night is not Ravenous Chupacabra. You know, you have to have your other creature out. And that's the thing. We couldn't, we couldn't draw, like, our other small creatures. You know, Chupacabras would have been able to take out the Dread Presences. Couldn't find these things. But this time we got them. So let's see how this, go this goes for us. There has been a seemingly lot amount of flash deck running around. Because the flash deck's definitely the one that if you you win the coin flip, you have a good curve, like you're doesn't matter what your opponent's playing, like you're probably gonna be winning. Gatsby! Oh my gosh, Gatsby with the tier 3 sub. Thank you so much, Gatsby. You are amazing. I really appreciate that. So they... They put out a creature to block Tithic. You know, like if the... I think I... Yeah, I think I'm willing to trade with Tithe Taker for drawing a card with, like, Brineborn Cutthroat. 
I guess they could have had Spectral Sailor. That would have been a worse trade for me. Soren's a great one to have resolve because then if you play a creature, they counter it, you just bring it back. Thanks, Gatsby. Yeah, Tithetaker does slow the flash deck down a bit. It does do that. Looks like my opponent's done a really good job of drawing lands. So Tithetaker doesn't look to be as um, impactful. Tapland, you're a killer. Yeah, the Spectral Sailor is so, so strong for a one-drop. All these extra cards. We are ahead on the battlefield and they're at nine.
I just get to draw multiple cards a turn. Though... If I don't play Liliana, they get to draw another card. So I think it's worth it to play it. Keep the, keeps them from drawing a card. You know, they, they get to draw one, no matter what, but if I don't play it, then they get to draw two. Of course, ideally... Ideally, we would draw spells more than all these lands. Ideally. That was the frustrating thing of just lands forever. I don't know, it was a lot of lands. I don't know how many. It was a lot, though. We even scried one to the bottom with the temple. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the same matchup. Sure looks like it. Yep. So they don't have tons of counter spells early. So I wanted to pressure those with my best cards. And I'm getting uh, completely punished for keeping uh, the land on top. You know, we had, we had three lands I kept a land on top. And then the next two are just lands. I'm getting really punished for doing that. So if I play Playcrafter, they have to discard a card, and I... It's basically they discard a card, I draw a card. So it's like a, it's like a one-of disinformation campaign. I think I'm going to wait on that. Could draw a tap land. So I, you know, I'm hoping that, never mind. 
Well, hoping they didn't draw. Didn't draw a counter spell here. I think that's better than playing Liliana. Not 100% sure. No. Stop. On a witness, really good. All right. Those are a couple of good draws for us. Yeah, the Hunter Witness worked out really well. All right, we're two and two. <laughs> yeah, Endless Cavaliers. I think they have that uh, set up at, um, you know, like Outback Steakhouse or something. I think that's the special for September. You get the Endless Cavaliers. <laughs> yeah, this is some tryhard music. All right, do we get Simic Flash again? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, here we go. Yep, resubs count for the sub goal and everything. Yep. All right, nice curve. We haven't really struggled hitting land drops any game, so I'm not too worried about that. We are on the draw again, though. Yoza! Getting the hype boats started, and then Schlag also getting that resub counting as well. Y'all get some hype boats for our subscribers here. Thanks, Gyoza and Schlag. Thank you so much. That gets us up to nine, from seven to nine. So we're one away from a sub goal. <laughs> it's all good, Sak Sakurasta. Um, you know, it's it's growing. The YouTube channel's growing and everything. I'm happy with that. I started uploading basically at the beginning of this year, and didn't really have didn't have good thumbnails, and so had basically no views until War of the Spark. And so from War of the Spark is where I really started actually having people watch, you know, get the YouTube views and stuff. So, you know, that, that's just like one set and now course, course at 2020. So we're basically two sets in with the YouTube channel there. So I am, I'm happy with how, with the growth and everything in two sets. Have you seen the spoiled dwarf that makes red things deal two plus damage? Yes. I don't think that card is that great. Just because it's, I don't know, it's a legendary 2-4 for 4 mana. It's like most of the time in red decks you're going to be playing it and then needing to untap with it and then do stuff. I mean, it's it's like a fine, like, you know, one or two of. But I don't think that that's a... I'm just not going to block. Sorry, uh, opponent. <laughs> I support Puppy with the tier ones of... The awesome name. I support no, Puppy I as well. This mask is intimidating enough. <laughs> I don't think you'll be needing that. Which one? Which one will we not be needing? You're not being specific enough. All right, we'll go with this one.
<laughs> Alright, sub goal up. Because of the pup. Sub going it up. Hey, this cloak's expensive. I will right, we'll discard this temple. Let me pick your Yeah, so basically I'm not I'm not sure that that card's really a four of. I, I could definitely see it being a sum of, but I guess like if you compare it to like gutter snipe, it's a similar type of card. Yeah, it's like a four drop legendary that you need to untap with. Also, it doesn't have like an ETB effect. And it's just a two four, you know, so it doesn't match up against like Lava Coil. I don't know. I'm. Is it bullish on it? Which means I'm. Bearish? Bullish. I don't know. Whichever one means that. I'm skeptical. I'm that one. So it's bearish. Yeah. Man, our deck's just sweet. Orzov sacrifice. Bear down, bull up. Mm. Alright, that's fine. They can they can block Midnight Reaper. I'm still doing just fine. We'll draw another card. And then Midnight Reaper will be in the graveyard where we'd be able to get it back with Cavalier Knight if we want. If Cavalier Knight dies, that is. No, they're just taking out the Playcrafter. Sounds good with me. That should be it. Three and two. Um, I don't know if Esper Hero is the best 2020 deck, but I was really impressed by it. I liked it a lot. Uh, I really liked the Chandra Tribal we played before also. I would say those are the top two for myself. Um... But yeah, if you're somebody who likes playing, you know, likes playing the Esper stuff. Um, there's another viewer here in chat that said they, they made like four or five changes to the blue black, the Demir list that we played last week. And that they're 12 and 0 with it. They're making those changes. Oh, you don't like control decks? Well, Chandra Tribal is a control deck also. Hogsin, what were the changes you, you said you made? I could write those down. I guess. Or if you if you have the if you have like the just a copy paste of your list, I'll put it up on my stream decker also.
Cool, good looking hand. I would like to draw a planes. I could temple and look for planes, I guess. I don't think I really want to use a temple to look for a planes, though. But if we draw planes, then we get to drop the 200 witness and then activate priest. Bleh. I mean, I'm not blocking with Priest, and I can't activate it. Might as well get one point of damage in there. I'm happy as a hellion to start some fires. Don't worry. Happy I as a hellion. Ooh. That's a good card to draw. Right? Yeah. Michael! Michael Skarn. Thank you so much for the uh, Twitch Prime sub. You are amazing. I don't just get Soren in play, honestly. I think I just want to get Soren in play. I know I could play Crafter away the Chandra. Um, yeah, let me get this in play. The ringing of my sword is your death knell. Uh. I abhor my knee. Okay, well that's a little annoying. Hey, these little guys are great. How predictable. We all make sacrifices. I didn't even get to play my Cavalier of Night. Yeah, I probably should have played Playcrafter. But so I was just going to be attacking the sh I was going to tick up on Sword again to do one to Chandra attack with the two life linkers, just play the Cavalier of Night as just a 4 or 5, keep the um activation up with Priest. That was my that was my plan there. <laughs> Red Deck's like, he's got lifelink, I'm out. <laughs> but yeah, Soren getting back one drops is really is awesome because yeah, just the minus one, keep the three loyalty. That really is pretty awesome. Um I'm just gonna scour barons. I think it's pretty likely we draw a land, and and I would like a land, so. See? Just playing more Flash. And everybody's all about these Flash decks. So I think they're probably going to play like the one of the two creatures here. <clears throat> so go Midnight Reaper. Yep. And then we could have Legion Zen for the next turn while we play a tap land.
Now they have this. Yeah, now they have this game board for this standard 2020 also. I wish I kind of wish I would have just played the temple first because if I play the temple and then play the hunted witness, I think then my opponent probably they have like a higher percentage chance of countering the hunted witness. I feel like. I mean, this card is really good if they do not have Wolf, but if they have Wolf, it's not good. And the problem is I'm, I'm going to really struggle against the Wolf anyway. If they have the Wolf, I'm going to really struggle. Please no Wolf, just untap. Okay. It's also going to be something I'll struggle against, but not as bad as the Wolf. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that is just as bad. Well, not everybody's on this deck, but a lot of people are. Like, this is the third time we've played against it in these seven matches. Did I just put that to the bottom? I did. <laughs> Thanks, Jam. It's a really good counter spell to have. You just get to draw a card with Sailor there. There's a really fast keep on top. to draw I really like to have like a two mana spell or something but we're just dead by spectral sailor
Yeah, could be playing main deck duress for this matchup. We could. I don't think it's worth it though. This quench is a card. Still trying to keep playing around quench. Yeah, I, I like Tithe Taker more than Orzhov Enforcer. I originally started with Orzhov Enforcer and thought Tithe Taker was um, a more impactful card. And so switched those two out. See, Spectral Sailor is just so good. You get to draw so many cards. Could be playing like more Legion's Ends for this matchup because, you know, Legion's End is just you know, can take out Sailor or Cutthroat it's, as something that's kind of cheap that you can double spell with. But the the match, so we've played against this three times now, and the two that we've lost have been because of Spectral Sailor. That didn't help. Uh, hey, Sarah. All right, so we're four and three. No, I don't. That's the thing. Playing so playing all like those kind of spells, like legions, ends, disfigures, that kind of stuff. It just makes it makes our overall game plan a lot worse. Like with being a uh, priest of forgotten god deck, we can't just be taking out. We can't just take out a bunch of creatures for a bunch of spells. It makes everything in our deck worse. We played. Uh, like all three games that we played against the flash deck were close. Two went two went our opponent's way. One went our way. But you know, like how they had like the one or two cards left if they don't have a counter spell for like a Soren. You know, like if basically if a Soren resolves, we are looking awesome in that matchup because of the ability to keep you know uh, bringing stuff back and everything. Those were. Those were close games, and, you know, we lost two of the three. We don't need to just completely change our deck because of that. I know. Mondays are usually the overreaction days for football fans, but we don't need to be overreacting here on a... We don't have overreaction Mondays here. Yeah, I, I respect that. The Gruul Avatar with the Gruul deck. I like it. We're one mana short from playing... One 
One man short from playing like Legion's End and Playcrafter. We're just going to take this trade. Their creature dies. We draw two cards. I'm going to take that trade. Good trade. So yeah, they just have expensive stuff. They get to, get to just single spell each turn. And they single spell and we take take out their stuff. We should be winning this one pretty easily. Now next turn we get to Midnight Reaper plus Playcrafter. Cauldron of Eternity with Sultai Elementals looks really good. I haven't seen this Cauldron of Eternity card yet. 10 Black Black. Legendary Artifact. Draw more cards. I'll taste your neck. You taste my blood. <laughs> what a mess I've made. Um, I really thought about just playing Playcrafter here and making them discard their last card. Honestly. Spell costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. So yeah, that, that goes good with Cavalier of Thorns, that's for sure. I have survived that's for sure. Nico Bolas, and I will survive you. Whenever a creature you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. Help you not mill out. Two in a black, tap, pay two life, return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Well, that is really good. Get him. Uh, the donation deck that we played, we had a skip the line donation deck. That was not uh, standard 2020, but yeah, the rest of these are. See our deck like really go crazy. Our deck can do some crazy stuff. When our opponents are just playing like one creature a turn, very good for us. Yeah, Soren is one of the most fun planeswalkers. I really like playing Soren decks. Soren is just so much fun to play. Cool. Yeah, the, the Esper Hero deck we played was really, really strong. Uh, the uh, the Chandra Tribal we played before. Yeah, deck, deck looks good when your spells resolve. Yep. That does not hurt, that's for sure.
Priest get shocked. I don't, yeah, I don't hate Priest getting shocked, but it's slowing down. Which I would like that. With Tasa as the commander? No, I play Soren as the commander in this kind of deck and brawl. Because you can play... You can play uh, Planeswalkers as commanders. Yeah, yeah. Forever Young is really great in the late game with with the whole yeah with a bunch of risen reefs and everything. Um, the problem with that kind of card, of course, is is drawing it early when you don't have and you know if you just draw like that and like a removal spell and some lands and stuff and you don't have anything to do with it. No, I don't believe Swift Blade Vindicator as a knight would be broken. Just, you know, oh, uh, why was I thinking that, that I was just going to kill the Playcrafter than the other two? Well, that was just a terrible block. All right, well, that was just a terrible block. For some reason, I was thinking... I have more pump spells anyway. Yeah, that, that block just was really bad. I was thinking, like, the two, like, it would kill Playcrafter first strike, and then the other two would kill it, but that just wasn't even the case. So that was just a very poor block. I will have revenge for House Marco.
So really, really want to top deck another Playcrafter or Soren for this Vindicator. Hmm. Never mind, that's lethal. GG opponent, I made a really bad block, but I don't we weren't gonna win this really anyway. Good hand. Um That kind of deck my opponent's playing doesn't work too often, but maybe this best of one format, maybe it can. Um but you know, just like removal spells. Playing against a deck with more removal than what we had. But maybe Chain Whirler leave in the format helps Vindicator. Maybe that's a thing. Let's play let's play through one more with our, our deck here. I've I've been enjoying playing this deck. On the draw again. Not where we want to be. Don't want to be on the draw. Yes, I could have sacrificed the Soren to block with Playcrafter, but Vindicator has double strike, so like double strike and trample. So all that does is just save two life. Like all that's all the Playcrafter does. I was, ho I think that. If we keep, uh, if we keep the uh, the Soren in play, maybe they attack the Soren and we save a lot more than two life. So that's why I kept the Soren in play. Sack the courier. Sack the courier. Darn. If we could have just traded Courier and Witness, would have been able to play Crafter away the Spitfire. That would have been nice. Anyone need a fire started? No. Too bad. So do I go with Playcrafter that either gets Spitfire or Chandra? Or do I go with Seraph of the Scales? That's a really good quality blocker. The Playcrafter is only going to decrease in value. But I think I still go Seraph. Make it a lot harder for them to kill me. Okay, maybe not. Plus, I liked how they use my mana. Where if I if I draw another land, I'd be able to like tight taker with playcrafter oh, stuff. But okay, so they're not. Cute. They didn't minus two to shock. Why is everybody playing that card? Ugh. Get another 1-1 one, one lifelinker for 1 mana. I'm telling the abbot. 
So they can trade in the Chandra to Lava Coil the Seraph. But then that it's going to make it harder for them to have lethal with the Spitfire. That may be... Interesting. Yeah, I want to dig for like Soren is our best draw step. No. Soren would be our best draw step. to meditation anyway. Ooh, they just let that resolve. I guess I'm sacking the Tithe Taker anyway. I want to keep this Life Linker out here. Come on, Soren. Ugh. It's brutal. Yeah, it's basically, can they get enough burn spells to finish me? Wow, we really did it. Through feud or feast, your blood is mine. I don't want them just to be able to use a burn spell to kill Soren. The weak feed the strong. <laughs> you saw the flame sweep coming? I guess I should have. Soren was spectacular. And so, yeah, my next. I am planning on next turn now uh, playing Liliana and making a zombie. Probably just continually to, continuing to tick up Soren. I do not want them to kill Soren. As long as they don't kill Soren, we should be good to go. Um. I don't think I've had it where Midnight Reaper kills me when my opponent board wipes. I, but I probably have at some point. I just don't really remember it. I know I had a crazy lethal one time where I was playing like a Biogenic Ooze deck, where it was like a really late game, like Biogenic Ooze, where like uh, and quasi duplicate, where I had a bunch of oozes, a whole bunch of tokens. But my opponent had uh, Midnight Reaper and stuff like that but they also had they had a bunch of flyers i don't remember what kind of flyer but they were going to kill me in the air the next turn oh i think oh it's was, this was soul tiger they're playing hydroid crisis right but they had like a midnight Re reaper or maybe two <clears throat> and they i just attacked with a bunch of oozes because i was going to die to the two die to like the crisis or two crisis yeah like two crisis and they must they had something that Oh, they had Wild Growth Walker, of course. So, like, with Wild Growth Walker, they gained millions of life. And they were at, like, you know, like, 70. Um, and they took exactly enough damage where they, like, went down to, like, 18. This looks like a fun new I remember toy. that. They had two Midnight Reapers. They went down to 18 after blocks. And they, they could have blocked differently, but... It was just a huge board, and they, they didn't block too well. But they, they went down to 18. I think they thought they were fine. But nine nine of their creatures died. And with the two Midnight Reapers, they took exactly lethal 
with the Midnight Reapers. It was exactly 18 triggers to kill them. That was a really cool game. Alright, GG's here. We're 6 and 4. And we got one more game. We're going to play one more game here with the Orzov. Sacrifice, see if we can get this uh, second win here. Oh, was it Frisky Biscuits? Nice. Yeah, we were down to five and then up to tw to twenty nine. I told you, like that's what. Yeah, we needed that sore, and that was a that was a really clutch sore that we drew there. Hey, we get to play first. Our good things. This on the play. Or sorry, on the draw would be pretty tough to keep because this is a really high curve. But maybe on the play we can get there. But this is still just a really high curve. Um, yeah. I think her fits our curve really nicely. Now let's draw some lands. We got two through six covered. Uh, healer is really nice for them. That's a good card to sacrifice to play crafter. So, like, you know, this has got to be an elemental deck. I uh, don't love the elemental matchup with you know my play crafters and stuff because I usually have a lot of creatures to sacrifice. Come on, deck, grab some lands. We're gonna need lands here. Land. Darn. Well, that's unfortunate. So I was playing my Golgari Sacrifice deck and I had a total slug fest with its elemental opponent. Only reason I won was because of Mulder Vine Reclamation. Felt like a champ. The game took like 30 minutes. There we go. Mulder Vine Reclamation. Well, that's a pretty sweet one. Steven says, I had an intense one where I beat a big board of field zombies with a biogenic ooze, a Nyssa, and three wilderness reclamations. Wow, yeah, that's pretty intense. Three reclamations, you just get to have so much mana, and then with Nyssa also. Alright, not looking good, not looking good. Our... Our turn four and turn five were horrendous. How we played 100 Witness for turn four and turn five together. We were looking good before that. Um, but now, not so much. Not so much. I guess I needed a block. Yeah, I guess I needed a block last turn. Yeah, this is just lethal. My plan was just, you know, I, I guess if I Cavalier of Night kill the Cloudkin Seer, I guess that's not lethal. But I guess we have to kill Cloud Seer instead of one of these other things now. Go get him, 
buddies. GG's. I think we would have had a shot if we could have curved out and, you know, played a four drop on four and then another four drop on five. But we didn't <clears throat> draw that fourth land. And I think if we did, I think we had a good shot at winning that, to be honest. But, if, like, if we were playing Seraph instead of Hunted Witness, and then if we would have had, you know, like, Soren or something to follow up instead of not playing a spell. But, oh, well. Um, <laughs> so there's Orzov Sacrifice. Fun deck to play. Uh, best of one. You know, that's how that's how best of one goes. Like, you're going to have times that you you don't curve out or and your opponent does and that kind of stuff. It's just it's fast games. And, um, you know, it's still six and five. Nothing wrong with that at all. We'll take that. Um, you know, that's kind of how best of one go. All right, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed this deck as well. And if so, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And, of course, there's the playlist with all the other standard 2020 decks also if you want to check out all the other ones. And uh, if, you, if you like these, these decks, if you want to have some different ideas. But thanks for watching. Some more is off sacrifice. And I'll see you for the next video.